So, I want to welcome my guest in the studio, Mwishimua Karibu Sana. Asante Sana, thank you very much. And also good to yeah. see you here, Wanjiru. Yes, how about you? Thank you for joining us. Now, mm. Mwishimua, mm -hmm. your committee has just presented a report yeah. to the National Assembly. Exactly. After considering what were a number of uh, proposals yeah. on uh, matters of administration and government. Uh, true. One of those crucial ones was whether to entrench the office of the Chief Administrative Secretary. Yeah. And that's what we want to have a conversation on. Of course, we'll also mm. touch on the other proposals that came before Parliament. No problem. You first of all took a report to Parliament, and then you sent a second addendum to that report in the Parliament. Correct. It created a bit of a confusion there. And uh, no confusion whatsoever. Uh, in fact, we are debating the two reports now. This afternoon, we had some animated debate on uh, the position of CS. It seems to be of interest to Kenyans, and we know for sure it's likely to be. Th there was the first report um, in which we had actually analyzed all these matters, including um, the capping of CIS is to about 22. But after reconsideration, after we got appeals from um, stakeholders, and especially in view of what we had enacted, we felt it was necessary to do an addendum and uh, we would actually remove the capping. This is because according to us and according to what we have done in the law, the position is now highly watered down. It is not what uh, was in the initial draft. It is now a position in the public service that um, is not anywhere near the CSEs and the PSEs. It's actually a position in the public service. They're going to be public servants like any other under public service commission. What was the initial recommendation? What was the initial draft? The, 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 the initial report mm. uh, had capped the, the CSEs at 22. And that was informed by the number of uh, ministries we have in the country because the 23rd position should have gone to the Attorney General but the Attorney General is not a cabinet secretary. He sits in the cabinet, but he's not a cabinet secretary. So we removed one and we were left with the 22. But on looking at exactly what you had done, the procedure of recruitment, the requirements for one to qualify as a CS, the functions that we attributed to that office, we were of the view that since the complement of the position now lies with PSC, then we leave it open to PSC to establish the number of CSS offices as need arises from time to time, which means they don't have to be 22, they don't have to be 50, they can be 5, they can be 10. It depends on what need there is. It's on a case-by-case, need-by-need basis. So you say this is just now, it's just an office in the public service? It's an office in public service. So what is this office? Whose principal function is to assist a cabinet secretary. Um, with three defined uh, functions. The first one is uh, you, they got to, to conform to government policy, like um, they are able to understand what they are doing in those offices. Number two, they are supposed to assist cabinet secretaries in their meetings and um, whatever other functions they are given. And the third one is whatever other function the cabinet secretary is going to assign to the CSEs. But you have made it very clear that that assignment does not include parliamentary business. So the only difference here is not including parliamentary business. And yes. this is basically saying does does not appear in parliament. Yeah, they do not appear when in the parliament, parliament summons, to represent a uh, cabinet secretary. Yes. A CAS cannot yes. appear. Yes. In That's a, the only in, difference. In our committee, we are prepared to accept maybe a PS appearing. But not a CS, because while the cabinet secretary is a state officer, the PS is also a state officer. This CS is not a state officer. Majiro, mm. the matter of CS has been, you know, in the public domain for a while. Just stepping back into former President Uhuru Kenyatta when he first introduced the CS position, and what he announced at the point was. I need people who will assist the cabinet secretaries in running around and performing their duties and fulfilling their mandates. And also, he said, while uh, appointing persons into this position, I am also going to pick young, promising leaders into this position 
where they can use this as a stepping stone in seeing how government operates, and these will be our future leaders. Now, of course, we saw what happened with the CASs in the previous administration. Okio Obtata went to court and said, this is unconstitutional. The court agreed with him. Um, the president was given an opportunity to amend this. Now we've seen with the new president coming in and saying, I'm going to follow the due process of going to the Public Service Commission. But as you're hearing from the honorable member, do you feel that what he's saying, they have watered down the position? Well, um, first of all, indeed, um, leeway to structure um, government in the manner that he will. The problem, of course, becomes that this, there's, um, this looks like a political appointment. And the president actually was very clear. Um, the manifesto uh, properly did not speak to that. But the preamble of the manifesto, he talked about institutionalizing politics. Mm -hmm. And we actually wondered, what does this mean? And he is showing, yes, institutionalizing politics is bringing in political allies into government so that they uh, float around and are there and possibly can take instruction, um, give assistance. Maybe they are looking a bit like assistant CSs, but they are not quite assistant CSs. So one, these, these are political appointments to political allies, um, possibly who had assisted during the campaign period or, or, or views to the president. So maybe the truthful position for Kenyans to understand is that. Um, the problem then... Is there something wrong with that? Um, well, yes, there is, because this is uh, taxpayers' money. It's happening at a time when we are in fiscal consolidation. And so there is really an ethical, moral question is this the time to load up the national government wage bill with people who don't have a very clear function? Secondly, the interesting thing is that for some reason, uh, the JLAC committee did not uh, follow the advice of the PSC because the PSC actually said, well, if this, these people are to be appointed and are to play a role that would assist uh, the CSs, they should have certain minimum requirements, and including experience of the public service. But the way the uh, committee then structured uh, the JDs made it very open for people who have, they, they actually twisted the words mm -hmm. so that anybody who's been in political office can meet those criteria. That's so I think great. there is, there is um, it, there, there's a lot of, um, disingenuity in how this is being presented to Kenyans. Mm. I think my last point is when you talk about uh, the need for assistance, indeed, we are very impressed by the way this parliament is working hard. They are, uh, you know, we have one of the, uh, not most expensive parliaments, but our MPs are among the most highly paid um, in the world. Um, and this house is earning their keep. So you can say, okay, we are by paying a lot. By processing bills. By processing bills. Okay. However, they are not listening to the people. So whereas they are, we are impressed with that workload, we would want to see that output reflect the needs of the people. So the needs of the people are, uh, right now we've got a doctor strike. Uh, part of the complaints of doctors is staffing levels, their salary issues. There is a report that was done that actually you look at the devolved level of government. There are a lot of human resource gaps. So we would expect this energy to be applied to where the services meet the citizens, not a bloated government, because you can't talk about fiscal consolidation and bloat government, and this is bloating. Maybe my last point is on this point of devolution, is we've had a national government that's been expanding the um, this wage bill at the national level, at a time when functions have been transferred to the county level. This administration is re-centralizing services. You know, Kenyans went to the polls, uh, passed a constitution that rejected centralized government and chose this devolved government. So what actually is happening is a re-centralization, which is why the cabinet secretaries are possibly overworked because they are doing work that doesn't belong to them. So in so many regards, this is wrong. 
And even if you're able to pass, if, if Parliament's able to pass it through the courts, mm. morally and ethical, ethically, it is wrong. Answered. Well, she will respond to these issues. Yeah, yeah it's good. Mm. I respond to this. Number one, um, functions. I don't think we've deviated from the functions that we were given by PSC. Mm. Um, we, be, we have begun with quali qualifications. Mm. How do you become a CS? You have to have a degree from a recognized university. You must have experience of having served in the public service for 10, Minimum 15, of 10 years. 10 years. Mm -hmm. Um, and, and the rest of it is the, the, the usual But then, Moshimua, yes, in your report, you actually indicate that the Public Service Commission came and recommended that, right? Yeah. And said that this person ought to have X number of years of experience, 10 of which should be in public service. It's exactly like that, in public service, yes. In the actual bill that then you've proposed, yep. the introduction into the National Government Coordination Act 2013, number one of 2013, you say let's insert a new clause, insert the following new section immediately after section 12, Chief yep. Administrative Secretary, yep. 12A, mm -hmm. there's established the office of uh, Chief Administrative Secretary, Correct. it shall be an office of the public service. Correct. Now 12.4 yep. says a person shall be eligible to be appointed as a CAS if the person A holds a degree from a university recognized in Kenya, B, has knowledge of and experience in the public service, and C, satisfies so the requirements the, the, of there is, there is the Constitution. Uh, yes. Not I in think. the report. The yes, the yes are in the proposed amendment, the experience of 10 years. In the final one that it you is handle. It is the proposed the, amendment that we are proposing. Mm. There is a, there is a 10, years, the 10 years experience in public service. Possibly I another report? It is there. No, 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 no. Uh, the proposals I'm reading the are, addendum. The, the proposals that you are taking to Parliament, yeah. and I have them, unfortunately I've left them in my car, you will see that there is the 10 years experience, and it's part of the requirements we have over there. So and one must have worked for 10 years in public uh, service? In the public service, and the public service is just is public service. I mean, th that's why we are saying this position is not pol politicians per se, but who are politicians? There are people who actually have degrees, mm -hmm. all right? There are people who have worked in public service for 10 years. So what stops them from being qualified? It's only that um, the, the belief is that we are creating this so that politicians can find themselves employed. But um, that may not necessarily be so. There may be other people who come in, and also politicians. You know, you cannot discriminate against them just because they are politicians. So, Moshima, you are certain that the final document that will be debated yes, in it, Parliament it has the 10 years. Has the 10 years. It has the 10 years. In public service. In the public and service. And in public service here we mean that they have worked in government. A public service, not necessarily that you've okay. worked in what government, it's you've actually served to the public in a certain capacity. Now that is very different. All right. Uh, that is is that what the Public Service Commission meant? In my estimation, that is what they meant. No, no, no. Because let me ask a question. Yeah. I have 10 years having served the public as a member of parliament. Yes. That is not public service? No, it, okay, let's in, just... In whose definition is it not a public as service? As a lawyer, and you know, we're not in a courtroom, we're actually talking about administrative side of government and delivery of services. Yes. There's a difference between the community service or the public service of an MP and being employed in the public service. And why? Why? And we've watched this. Um, People who have experience in the public service understand the systems, the way they work, and they've grown possibly even in terms of the cadre uh, and the um, assignments that yeah. they take. Therefore, when they get into delivery, they are more effective. One of the things we've witnessed is when you have people coming in to work in the public service and disrupting the way government is supposed to run. The other thing that the PSC report uh, pointed out is that the roles of the CS and the PS are very clear, and that the functions given to this CAS position appear to overlap these. How do you deal with that? Because when you lack clarity in function, when you lack clarity in reporting, you are creating a, a, a scenario for confusion, for chaos, for lack of delivery. But sincerely, uh -huh. isn't this theoretical? 
Number one, those are there is basic a difference governance between, principles. There is, eh? a, there is a difference between public service and civil service. Mm -hmm. I think what she's emphasizing on is civil service, not public service. As far as I'm concerned, I work for the public. I'm a civil servant. Sorry, I'm a public servant. I may not be a civil servant. But so, sure, let, let me read from your own ad uh, addendum yeah. what you posted here and said this is what the Public Service Commission had said yeah. to the committee. Yeah. In view of the fact that the office of the CAS is a senior position in the public service, in the public service, the Public Service Commission proposed the addition of a new subclause to Section 12A to provide for years of professional experience as follows that this person has at least 10 years relevant professional experience, yeah. five years of which should have been in a leadership position or a top management level in the public service, not yeah. in public service, in the public the service. public service, yes. Or private sector. In the public service, then it means it doesn't have to be civil service, but in the public service may mean civil uh, service. That's number one. But I confirm we captured uh, part of what they actually, we didn't have to agree with all of it, but we captured what we thought was reasonable, yeah. the 10 years experience in public service, and we have that as part of the qualifications. So the persons who are coming in would actually fit the bill in that they have a degree and they have the relevant experience. Um, if they've been politicians, really politicians, who, who are they? Yeah, uh, are, are politicians I mean, politicians who are, apart from having gone to parliament, and I speak politics, how else am I as a public servant? Because some of the members of parliament we have, they've been senior civil servants, all of them. They've served okay. in the PSCs, um, some of them have been principal permanent secretaries, others possibly were ministers at one time, name it. So what, what does it mean, politician? Do you think, I think it's a discrimination. Do you think, Moshimu, mm -hmm. it's important for a chief administrative secretary? Yes to have experience in administration in the public service, in understanding the bureaucracy that is the civil, let's use the word civil service then, for, yeah. in, to understand the bureaucracy of civil service. Yeah, but, but somebody who has worked in the public service, including myself, I was from private practice of law. Today I work uh, in parliament, as a member of parliament. What would be difficult would be understanding a uh, bureaucracy of the government. That's number one. Number two is uh, with the experience that we have given in, um, what stops any other person from qualifying? Uh, number three, it is assumed that these are going to be maybe the president's supporters, our pre the supporters of the government. And if that is the case, it, it, it's a practice world over. Mm -hmm. It is not just us who are unique in this. It's world over. So it's your position that the recommendation here does not necessarily say that this person must have been a public officer for 10 years. A public officer? You're a public officer. I'm a public currently. officer as well as a state, a state officer. officer. Yeah. Right? Yeah. So your, your, your position My here understanding is, that is he does not have a to... A CAS does not have to have been a, civil a public officer for 10 years. I, to, to my understanding, he's got to be, he, he's got to be a public or a servant. He must have worked for the public for 10 years. So he must have been a public officer to be, to, to be sincere. Because those who work for the public, those who work in the civil service are public officers. So that cures it. But to have been a civil servant, that has another connotation. Yeah, mm. okay. That's, that's my understanding. You, and that's where you're drawing it. So, so the I'm other drawing issue that Wajira that, has raised yeah. is on the issue of, are you listening to the public? Yes. Now. Yes. You have just been what reading level what... level of public participation did you have? You see, you see, we can only do what the law says we are able to do. And we do not have a public participation act in this country. We only have it provided for in the constitution. The mechanism is left until the law is enacted to parliament to decide how it is done. And we have our standing orders that are very clear on how we do it. One, we can do the memorandum. Number two, we have to do public hearings, stakeholders engagement, etc. all this. And we went through them. We were able to invite those who wanted to present memorandum. We were able to meet those who intended to come in person. And we also met stakeholders, those who felt they had special interests in the matter.
So we did as much as we were able to do. And if you look at our report, we are able to quote all those who appeared before us and what their representations were. Having advertised it in the press, having told every Kenyan what we were going to do, it was up to Kenyans to choose whether to come to us or not come to us. So we did sufficient public participation as far as we are concerned. I think, um, you know, when I listen to you, I really think as uh, civil society advocates, we may have failed in educating our politicians on what public service, uh, public participation is. Because number one, you don't need a law. The principle is that sovereignty rests in the people of Kenya. Mm. And it's a national value. It's a requirement at every stage of engagement. Mm -hmm. So the point is, public participation means listening to the needs of Kenyans. Now, one of the needs of Kenyans and the cry that's all through the country is cost of living. So even as um, chair of JLAC, as a member of parliament, alongside other members of parliament, when the president expresses the wish to hire positions that may not be urgent, do you not have a responsibility as the people's defenders? Because the role of a member of parliament is to represent the needs of the citizen. But are we you're, you're first bound to the constitution. Second, your duty is to the constituents who elected you and then you serve the party. So right. you have a role in terms of saying, yes, Mr. President, we recognize that this is a move that can assist you, um, you know, in political terms, maybe even in delivery, if you insist. But it's the wrong time because we are heavily indebted, we are overtaxing Kenyans, and we cannot afford to take money out of ho 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 households homesteads out of the pockets of people and hire people who we do not need. All right, you listen so, to, so, to me on so this one. This is what I mean when I say a hard-working parliament. But who are you working for? Now, because you're not listening to the very let's basic see whether we are, Kenyans. Whether we are listening to them or not listening to them. Mm -hmm. And depends on which side of the coin you're looking at. Number one, we've not said how many CSs are being employed. Provided these are Public, uh, public Service Commission employees appointed by the president. Number one, we know for sure some of the ministers are overstretched. The cabinet secretary is overstretched. And it's an urgent need. Because when we did the retreat in uh, Naivasha, one uh, fact that came out was some of the CSEs were not able to attend even to parliamentary matters because they are overstretched. So the need for CS arises, even if it's not to come to parliament, to do the parliamentary matters, maybe for delegation of the other matters that the CS is doing. So that, that brings the, uh, the point of urgency, that in, a, in spite of that 50 or what number may not be urgent, there may be five or 10 that are very urgent. Okay. That's number one. Number two, the issue of taxation, really, is not going to be taken away or um, ameliorated by the fact that we've employed five, ten people, right? Or fifty, because, or, or a hundred. Now, if, if you overblow it, and if there are reasons to do it, and you have the resources, there is no problem. But if you overblow it, there may be an element of cost to it, which the public may be questioning. We've already seen education. Fifty. If that, that even is even the if there are five, currently. That, I, I would say that was then. Yes. Remember, the court came in to say if it were 23, it would have been comfortable. Uh, the president and every other person in authority is not oblivious of what courts observe. It is, it's in public domain, so we need to know what is happening. That's number one. Number two is uh, these persons who you're saying their role is not defined. To be honest, these are people who are supposed to help the CSEs. Do it. Can I, can I ask a question? Can I ask a question? Because the even CSEs before we get into what they assist, mm. Kenyans are heavily taxed, paying for an entire machinery that's called the public service or the civil service, including the PS, including directors, including uh, a whole battery of staff who work to serve Kenyans. Now, these are technical staff, but um, what is it that prevents the government from utilizing these people fully so that you can avoid bloating the wage bill? Because Which, what we are seeing, this is a 
populist, it looks like an expansionist populist move at a time when we cannot afford it. Perhaps, if we, if we had a Shimura, surplus. Wow. In your engagement, yes. because you engage mm -hmm. extensively, like yes. you said on this, yes. in your engagement, can you give us an example of an area where a cabinet secretary would need a chief administration secretary to that, go and represent That cannot be served Pro by the... Prof by Professor, the Kithore, Professor Kithore Kindeki. Yes. Maybe if I'm to single out one person. Okay. No, not because he's from my constituency. The Minister for Interior. The Minister for Interior. Who and has he a has, permanent secretary. He has several state departments. Yes. He has two or three permanent secretaries. Three. Mm -hmm. uh, possibly three. Yes. But I can assure you, you know very well he doesn't sit in Nairobi. Uh, he's always out there trying to deal with security matters. Okay. This person has many other commitments in Nairobi and also in other counties where he needs to delegate to uh, staff, junior staff to him, okay. so that he's ably represented. Remember, the PS is not able to represent the CS because their roles are totally different. Mm -hmm. this, this other PS is the accounting officer of the State Department. He's the technical person. He's the one who developed policy. So his plate is already full. And that one of the CS is already full. While the technical person has many persons under him, the directors, mm. the under secretaries, and what have you. The CS doesn't have anyone. And this is why we have come in to say, so let's say we need let's, a let's specialized example, person available the most, to the CS yes. to actually be doing the delegated work. Excuse the, me, the what, what work does the, the CS do that is, that is not informed by policy, that is not informed by the technical? Going by that example, yes, the, the Minister the for meeting. Interior, mm -hmm. for example, yeah. has a State Department for Immigration, Correct. has a State Department for Coordination of Government, yeah. Yeah. Right? and Correctional Services. And Correctional mm -hmm. Services. Yeah. So let's say that the Minister is attending to matters of passports, yeah. and there's a matter of prisons that needs to be attended to. Yeah. Are you saying that there's nobody in the State Department for Correctional Services who could go and do that job. What and the, is and this? that the PS no, cannot. No, you see what you are saying is. What is this? And is why can the PS away? not? What, what is it? This other person is not charged with that responsibility. All right? He may be there for delegation. He may not be available for delegation. But when we have a person who has that responsibility bestowed on him by the law, that now makes it easier for the CS to actually delegate. And what you are doing is to, to define the law so that everybody knows what you are supposed to do. Because, let, let's be sincere and honest, sometimes there is tough war between CSEs and principal secretaries as to who should tell the other what. What happens where there is such a uh, war tough? The appointing authority. The appointing authority yeah. will have to come in and try. Yes. If, if, he had, if that CS had a CAS, because there wouldn't be a problem when it comes to delegation. Because you delegate to a principal secretary, the person has technical work to do or other engagement elsewhere, and that is that. But when you have somebody who is directly under you, under the law, this is the person you are supposed to give the work to do for you. Mwenshimiwa, you brought in actually, it's a crucial dimension because, you know, political regimes come and go, and the civil service remains, and the whole thinking. Um, even though now the PSs are also appointed by the president. Um, and there is actually a whole discussion around the transition of PSs because a lot of institutional memory is getting lost. It's taking PSs too long to pick up. And part of the problem of implementation, because there was a PSC report that showed the performance is quite poor. Um, it's mediocre. Uh, part of the problem is these transitions. But the issue you're raising, um, to me, uh, really is a big concern. If you're saying that tough wars between a CS and a PS will prevent a CS from delegating or working together uh, with the PS, then you're telling us government isn't working and that Kenyans are paying for two, two different governments. For dysfunctional system. Yes. So you need to fix it. And there are ways to fix and ensure that departments work together to serve the Kenyans. Yeah. So what the, ex the, the reasons you're giving are actually uh, betraying possibly the real intention of this, which is the CAS is coming more on the political side. But for Kenyans, whether it's a CS or a PS, 
That's taxpayers' money. It and is. what guides that? There is a manifesto, and this manifesto informs the policy which binds everybody in the civil service. That I agree. That is how it's supposed but, to be. But tell me now. So can you use public money prudently with a lean workforce? Because you have told us time and time again, tighten the belt, dig deep in the pockets. We are in fiscal consolidation, but government is living large. What do you get for that tax, the taxes you pay? You want efficient delivery of services. Who says if we have CASs, we won't make it more efficient? By adding more people. You when see, you already have you can see a the million, addition of more. As, uh, I, but, I believe it's a million. But with that, with the, with the more you, you are thinking of the more we have, mm. we are finding it actually sometimes it's just not possible to have a CS available to do what he's supposed to be doing. Yes, but there's so, a PS. And the PS also has his own role. And the PS also law. has people under him. Exactly. The point we are making, why, it, you know, if there was an audit done, and, and because the, the data we've seen, the reports we've seen, is that there is gaps in service implementation level. That's where the human resource gaps are. Unfortunately, government is loading up the top bureaucracy. And parliament, um, the defenders of the people, are allowing government to load up the top instead of asking if we are going to add personnel to the uh, civil service, to the public service, where do we add? And let us get out of top, top, you know, this is a bottom up government that is going let, let top me heavy. Respond, let, let me respond. Who says we do not have deficiency at the top? Where is the audit that has shown that? Now, that's the problem. That, that's number These one. are political decisions. No, 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 no. Well, mm -hmm. it's, it's, it's politics. The government is political. Yes, but it's you, taxpayers' you money. It should be informed either by the a tax, proper audit. Either the, taxpayers, on, mm -hmm. either the taxpayers do pay money for the politics you're talking about. Mm -hmm. I mean, sincerely speaking... We pay money we pay, for service delivery. We, we pay money for the politics you're talking about. This is our government. It's a political government. Who says we've not identified at the top, mm -hmm. from the CS to the PS, there's a gap? That's one question. You know, her opinion cannot be what stands for everybody else. All right? We have identified that a CS actually needs an assistant. Mm -hmm. And this assistant is named the chief administrative secretary. He may not be an administrator because administrators in government departments are PSs. But he is there principally to assist the CS in the service delivery. Who says once we do it, we will not make it more efficient such that we are getting value for our money. Because what appears to be is condemnation, that we pay more money for these people, we are doing more for this, and we are getting nothing out of it. Who says we are getting nothing out of it? Because we have had these CSs in the previous government, they were there possibly in Kibaki government, or wherever they were. Initially, they used to be called, when it used to be political, purely political, yeah. assistant ministers. They may not be assistant ministers today, or they may be, but what we know for sure is these are employees of Public Service Commission with a specific mandate under the law. This is what you are going to do. This is what you're supposed to do. We yeah. are informed mm -hmm. by the memorandum that was written by the president mm -hmm. to the Public Service Commission mm -hmm. when he requested the creation of mm -hmm. the CAS position. Mm -hmm. And key among his requirements was, I need somebody who helps my ministers especially in attending to parliamentary duties. Mm -hmm. That was central mm -hmm. to the president's request. Mm -hmm. And then he said, and other duties as may be assigned by the cabinet secretary. Mm -hmm. So the president's request to the Public Service Commission initially was, I want somebody who will be helping my ministers be answerable and responsive to parliament and Correct. the people of Kenya through Correct. parliament. Yeah. That was the justification. Yeah. Well, the Public Service Commission mm -hmm in conducting its public participation as mm -hmm. it said it did mm -hmm. it sent a report and said yes the public has agreed that there is need for somebody to help the cabinet secretary mm -hmm. in responding to matters in parliament mm -hmm. that was the request it was agreed then yeah what has changed since but then? what is the law the problem is the law is not exactly what the request was all about exactly the so what has the, changed the, since the, then the, the, the because law because what you're saying is, when, when, who, when, who informs us? And I was answering the question. We are informed 
the justification for the CAS. We are informed by the president. I have, we I are have informed lost. by the response of the Public Service Commission. I have to not the seen the memorandum, so I may not be it able to say exactly whether that was the sole reason he gave. He may have given no, no, no. It wasn't reasons. the sole reason. Let's, it was the main reason. On. And unfortunately, under the law, start with the Constitution. It is CSEs who are responsible to Parliament, all right? Yes. Then we have a matter of standing orders to make sure that cabinet secretaries attend parliamentary sessions to answer questions and give whatever information. This is the reason why, when you look at the first draft, there is an element of parliamentary liaison in uh, this draft, mm -hmm. which we rejected. Why? O on the basis that, number one, um, it would be a constitutional to let these people into parliament because the law doesn't allow them to do so. It would be possibly unlawful unless we are able to amend the law all the way possibly up to the constitution. Number two, when we looked at these positions we are creating, these are not uh, persons who can act as ministers because cabinet secretaries are state officers. These CASs are not state officers. They are public officers. That makes the distinction why we say they look at what you are creating. It's an office in the public service. These are the functions that are going to be given by the law, and these are the requirements of these persons. So, uh, and unfortunately, we had to remove the parliamentary liaison because we felt that may be unlawful. That's what we also, from the draft, they were supposed to be state officers. We looked at what the constitution says about state officers, and it does not include the CASs. So we also removed that. This is why we have a plethora of amendments to this act, so that we make it aligning to the constitution and to any other statutes that are relevant. So if we remove the main thrust, which was the president wanted somebody who can help his ministers respond to parliament, why don't, I re the, why don't I repeat and what say, are these other jobs? I didn't see that memorandum, and uh, I don't know whether what you were stating was number two, number three, number four. But what I know for sure the president wanted, and what we have created for the Republic of Kenya, are people to assist CSs in delivering on their mandate. That is, because some of them are too busy, they are too occupied, and it may become difficult to have somebody who works closely with you. We have decided to create a position where a person by the title Chief Administrative Secretary will work closely with the CS and assist that person in delivering on their mandate. I think, Mwenshimiwa, even as you, you know, really make this case and you make it so, so strongly, there are key questions that remain unanswered to the public who dig, who dig deep into their pockets to support an entire civil service that is, I believe, a million people Possibly a million yeah, strong. Mm -hmm. And then uh, you turn back and say, even though there's a shortage of um, doctors, there's a shortage of um, support to those doctors, there's a shortage of, I, I, I believe, civil engineers at county level, that there are shortages at service delivery level. And whereas we have quite an expensive and extensive um, bureaucracy and, and at, the, at the higher levels of government, that despite all of that, government is asking Kenyans to rearrange their pockets. But government cannot rearrange themselves so that the, P, the CS can work with the peers, can work with that staff that is already paid for. So number one, in terms of prudent utilization of resources, for a government that has put the country into fiscal consolidation, I believe that's unethical. And that's immoral because right. you're holding two different standards for the public and for government itself. S secondly, is the point that you make that there may be tough wars between the PS and the CS, how then are these two supposed to work together? Because the accounting officer, like you said, I believe is still the PS. Is the PS. And is the accounting officer not supposed to support and work with the CS yeah. so that citizens can enjoy the services? Yeah. Should you then not be working but at the culture? Because when you look at the public service report that was published on the performance of pu uh, public service, um, for last year, they say the biggest gap is the culture 
in the public service. So here you yeah. are telling us you're going to add more people. And we could say, yes, we can see the CSEs are really out there. So but two. the problem based on the evidence is that there are gaps at implementation level, lower level, mm. and that there are gaps in culture. So are you not then curing but, the wrong problem? But, but tell us the truth, even if from your own perspective. Are we also not curing gaps at the bottom level of the government? Because before even the CSEs came in, we had to work on a teacher's service commission, and we have made massive recruitments there. Uh, you're talking about the doctor's strike, which is routine anyway, it's almost inevitable. But you can see the doctors are being posted to wherever they are supposed to be. And wherever there are other gaps identified by PSC, there are advancements all over on who is going to be recruited. How come we only see the position we, we are trying to create, which is supposed to be to be assisting cabinet secretaries to be more efficient when it comes to delivering services. Because what we are saying is, and you will agree with me, and I've given you one example. While we know the CS for Interior is doing a fantastic job for the country, it's all over the... the but the, not tapping the peers. You haven't yet raised that. Uh, now, the Spoken to the, the staff the who The peers is a technocrat. He's not supposed to go to counties trying to tell us about security Why not? matters. Because he cannot... He's a technical just, person. He, he can cannot, give a report. He, he can cannot, carry a message. He, he cannot they leave, always have. He cannot leave his office because he's a technical person. He's also the chief administrator of that state department. He has his plate, which is full. Right. Is what you're trying to tell us... Are you saying he cannot... Or he can do it once, but he, he can't do it as, as often. He, he can do it once in a while, but, not, but he cannot be as often as the CS does. So here we are responding to a political issue. It's not in terms of it's also service delivery. It's, it's, in terms what of what about efficiency? You see, when, for example, the Honorable Professor Kithure Kindiki mm -hmm. goes to Baringo, yes, right, yes, he is not going there to respond to actively respond to the security crisis. He's going to try to give guidance. He is the reason giving. he's going there is to try uh, establish exactly where the problem is, right. where are the shortcomings, right. uh, how do we deal with this in a more efficacious right. matter. All those are the, well, the issues he's going to be. If there are technical issues that have to be handled, he has to carry them back to Nairobi and give them to the PS. And the commanders the who are in charge of the and security. The commanders of the who are in charge. Now, so the issue here is the political response that the community sees that the government, through the minister, is on the ground. The government has come because there were attacks last night and people were killed why and we have seen the minister. Why do we because call it a political response? Why do we, why, what's wrong with... Why is it not a security what's response? Because you have security personnel on the ground. There's a security operation that yeah. has a command structure. Yeah. The commander of the security operation could appear to the community and say, yes, this has happened. I hear what's happening, I get the feedback, I'm going to restructure and who has my operation. Who has the responsibility for that? The commander. commander. No, I'm sorry. The responsibility for security is the CS. Does he have to be on the ground? He will. We, Can I? And what stops him from going to the ground? Thank because you. Number one, so we are responding to a political one, issue. Thank you. Number one, it is political. Number one, he I, also needs to get first hand information on why? this. Why? So that he knows how There's to a commandant. It. That's he the job they reports do. at his desk. Every day. That is one. And he can receive them on the go. The other one? When he's in Baringo and something else and happens he, in and Lamu, he sits, yeah. does he have to go to Lamu? Now, when Lamu comes up and it needs uh, immediate attention, his PS is not available. There are people does on the ground. The first thing he's going to do is to possibly to get his CAS. Can you get the next available means? Go to Lamu and establish exactly what has happened. This Are there be, lapses? This may be where the problem is then in our public service. Yeah. That our national government administration officers, with a structure all the way to the ground, yeah. is not working. The cabinet secretary does not trust the report that's coming from his Ngao officers down. That's why he wants to go and establish for himself. Th that may be one. The right. other one may be... Uh, if that's the case, then let's fix that. There, there may also or, that, or so then, that to, those the positions can and sleep for the crying out the, loud. The, the other problem may be that it is also very important to get first-hand information yourself. Even as a person who is implementing a project or implementing a whatever it is, it's good to get first-hand information. That is what drives him to go to the ground so that he is able to know exactly where are the deficiencies, where are the shortcomings. So then he's able to know how best and 
in an very efficacious manner is going to solve the problem. There's a problem. Because, 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 you, know, because you see, the problem we have is this. Yeah. Part of it is, uh, again, the information you, you receive and how much of it is received and to what extent is what is supposed to be given. So you, you have to be in touch that is with the idea. reality. Is it the same thing for education? Could I, could I, education, could I, could I, education, could I, education I also has the same Could I raise a point here? Mm -hmm. And I think what's becoming very apparent mm -hmm. is a total centralization mm -hmm. of the functions of the ministries, mm -hmm. which brings, you know, if critically we were to look at this, the question Kenyans will ask is then, if the CS is working out on the ground and he's taking up the role of the commandant or uh, the, the, the head of who, uh, the head of education mm -hmm, services mm -hmm. or whatever mm. then why are you double billing kenyans why are we paying for this person the assistant um, you know cas but they are doing different things the why point do we need is, a county education officer yeah let me let me let me go back will have to go let me go back you know, let me let me officer. go back to security and the reason i go back to security is because after the demonstrations on cost of living which is still an issue and which is part of the concerns around this model of, of government um, because there were i believe there were 67 uh, deaths uh, which unfortunately haven't received the attention of Parliament in the way other matters have, have received attention. So much as uh, Parliament is very fast, working hard, pretty efficacious. But have you brought them to Parliament yourself? Pretty, pretty efficacious. Have you brought those matters to Parliament? Uh, when 67 <laughs> because people... Because you, know, you cannot well, say Parliament is going to move me, itself to do these me. things. Yes, Parliament, it can, not ca himself. Parliament can move itself it to investigate any matter it deems important. And if you think or the death of Parliament. 67 people at the hands of, uh, gov uh, at the hands of police uh, brutality uh, is important, many, Parliament how, could how have been moved. The question, now, the question I'm asking, died? now because of that, yes, so where is the yeah. report on that? So the point I'm asking is out of that, a uh, uh, commission was set up and headed by Maraga, investigating the security service, what went wrong and what can be improved. And they produced oh. a report. Ma Ma Maraga, now, Maraga was dealing with a... National security. Yeah, their, terms, their terms of welfare. Yes, and yes. It's, it's so, not, not riots and not... Uh, no, it came up as some of the... Riots sub, may have some, come that we some, don't have... Some of the themes... We don't, uh, we don't have enough um, equipment. Was, we don't have... Uh -huh. I mean, yeah, some, now you're bringing that it. May, that may so have you come, know that, may have that come report up as, uh, raised the problems we are having in security. And in fact, in Nairobi, we are experiencing a lot of insecurity because there was some restructuring that was done that removed the community policing element um, from the ground. And so we are not able um, to have proper investigations and proper monitoring of the security police. Uh, but security. what, what, so what, 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 what the recommendation was is number one, the primary shortfall facing security uh, is financing. The second is the issue of structure, the lack of independence, mm. lack of accountability, the lack of the community level because of the restructuring of the AP. Something was lost that he, they were recommending needs to be put back. Now, I want to raise two things here. Instead of putting money with the CASs, could you please give us functional, uh, could you put the money where services are meeting the citizens? This is an example of what you're saying, but it, that there are gaps that need to be met, but Parliament is only looking at the political response, forgetting you need to finance Are you trying to say Parliament arm. is not budgeting for these things? But it's necessarily, but we are just doing I am budget trying policy to say statements that now. We are budgeting for whatever it is she's course. reading. Mm. But my question is this. Mm. We come right from the presidency. Yeah. We are coming downwards. And even the president himself, goes to the grassroots so that he has first hand information to, to, to hear from the people which every government servant should actually do anyway it is not just in budgeting uh, for the police how much will each police station have because police stations by the way are running are, on empty are you, are you trying to say we do in fact, are running on empty and have been run, and there are parts of this country by the way that do not have policing so even if the cs is going to show up and ask questions of the commandant, he won't be able to respond because no, the may. money is tied he up may. paying he the may. top level. Let me ask so you. what I'm saying is that we have a bloated uh, wage bill. The national government wage bill, number one, is in excess of the functions they, they do 
because of recentralization. So as chair of JLAC, kindly, could you make clear to us whether you support devolution or you support hey, recentralization? Unfortunately, I don't think we are dealing with devolution it, of here. Of course you are. Because, just because it's about spending let's, let's money is, let's to let's allow the, so the, the issue here administrative is, structures The, the, the issue here work. is the national costs. government. Right. Is cost to the national government. Mm -hmm. Cost to county governments is a separate and different topic. Why is it separate? Because we will not deal with counties on security matters. Of course you do. How? Because what? there is an intergovernmental aspect. Let's not digress. Yes. I think, I think the, we are digressing. The issue, the issue the that we, is we don't digress is the because, issue we have is because we if you're spending up here, you're not spending down there. But These let, are let not me separate. The, the, the principle, the principle, Wajiro, Wajiro, let me but let the me principle ask. that we're raising is here, one. Let the me. principle that we're raising here, Mushi, that is being yes. raised here, Mushi, as I understand it from Wajiro, mm -hmm. mm -hmm. is if you add another cost structure here, yeah. how does it impact other service delivery? How does it impact everything else? If we are in the era, like we are in the era of fiscal consolidation, yeah. if you add other offices, mm -hmm. not capped at 22, mm -hmm. could be 50, Mm -hmm. could be beyond mm -hmm. and the public service commission says let's pay them 780,000 shillings a month yeah. and there's going to be a cost for establishing this office mm -hmm. for kitting them for mm -hmm. giving them vehicles and all mm -hmm. for having if this cost comes in what is suffering in this era of fiscal consolidation is it capitation to our children who have not received capitation this month the cabinet secretary the principal secretary told parliament yesterday that capitation will be at least 50% of capitation will be sent by the end of March. Yeah. That means there are delays in capitation. Is it healthcare, where the Ministry of Health says, we have not been able to dispatch interns to public hospitals and training centers because we don't have money? Is it that that continues to suffer? What is it that suffers because of this new cost structure? I do not think there really any, 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 there will be much suffering. These offices are few, as we have said. Number one, we are not saying there will be any blotting, that the numbers are going to be excessive, that lots of money is going to be spent on this. That's number but one. But you have not two. put any, any barriers on the public service we've, we've not, but we've got a prudent government. There is no reason whatsoever why we should say our government is going to be imprudent. There is no reason why we're going to say public service. There is. Service. Well, there, there is. No, there is. I will demonstrate. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Public service commission is I will going to be imprudent. A request for... 22 CISs, a nomination, an appointment of 50 CISs. This is a demonstration that decisions can be reversed but, overnight. But we I'll, are, we, I'll, I'll but also that add, means I'll also that add. even if the 50 are sworn in tomorrow after they are sent of the law, another 50 can be nominated and appointed. Yeah, but and the I'll, end of the I'll, year. I'll but also why, add to the, the concern, if you'll allow me. Um, we have a commitment from this government in terms of the budget deficit and we have had um, the previous budget, uh, the budget just ended, a figure set for the fiscal deficit mm -hmm. which by the end of the year has mm -hmm. to be revised upwards mm -hmm. because government is not able to stick within the spending commitments that it has. Mm -hmm. And all the while government is telling us, oh, we have a very unfavorable global um, uh, financial situation. Which is true. Then they are also spending on a lot of unnecessary priorities or other things that look like could be deferred. And now what, what we are saying, and, and really you can't tell us that uh, an estimated cost, what's the estimated cost of a... Uh, of a CAS per year, what's the, or, or per month, what's the opportunity cost? Every shilling spent has an opportunity cost I agree. because the resources are finite. But you so see, you cannot tell us there won't be much of a benefit. a benefit. The only problem we, we have is once you make up your mind this is not necessary, then you don't see it as necessary. No, you're not I answering have, our I, question. I have made up a case mm -hmm. that for the CASs, it is a necessary cost as we speak today because it has come out clearly wherever we've gone that our CSEs are not able to discharge some of their functions because their plates are full. And this is why in our estimation and after consulting even the Public Service Commission, they're saying it is prudent to create the position of CAS. The number 
we have said it's a complement by PSC because PSC will be able possibly on request to determine what the numbers should be. And we don't think it is that imprudent. Number two, it's also not right for you to say we are not trying to solve problems from the grassroots. I mean, we have just said teachers, we are just recruiting a policeman. We are recruiting everybody who has come along. That is from the basics. When you look at the basics, you must also look at what happens at the top because service delivery is going to flow from the top all the way to the bottom. I thought or from bottom. the bottom <laughs> all the way up. Mm. It, it cuts both ways. Mm. If you don't do it well up there, down there it's going to be if rotten. If you don't invest you don't, on down, you're if, not going to get If down delivery. there you don't invest, then you have a problem. So the investment must flow from top to bottom, bottom, top, without any hesitation. So I do not see why the emphasis is on a, a couple of possibly people who are supposed to make delivery of services better than it is being today. And that delivery is some of these CSs are overstretched. They require assistance. And I hope I've made out a case that when you come to the PS, who also has a full basket according to the law, then this is necessary. And that's why we feel it should actually be anchored in law. And that's why even the courts, I've never said this is a position that should not be there. The court's problem has always been how you are doing it is wrong. Not that the position should not exist. So the, all the three decisions we have, it's the way you are doing it is wrong. There's nothing wrong with the position, but the way you are doing it is wrong. Now we are trying to do it right. The courts have not said there's nothing wrong with the position. Yeah. The courts have only said the process of doing this it? position is yeah. follow due process. Yeah, follow due process. Establishing the office. That's what we are doing. That's, that's, that's what we are doing now. Mishimo George Murugara, please, final comment here. Mm. Many people who have seen the, the news, you know, what has happened, your committee initially capping it at 22 and then removing that lead and thinking, okay, Murugara must have gotten a call. And told, no. Why are you capping my people? No. Respond to that. To be one. frank and honest with you. And then number two, really speak to Kenyans and justify why at this particular time the same Kenyans who 14 years ago voted in a new constitution that abolished the position of assistant minister, why they need to accept an assistant minister by another name? Uh, number one, there was no, no telephone call from any quarter because we just reconsidered our position after we received the representations on CAPI. When we took our report, and it was read by stakeholders on what we had said, they said, fine, this position you have created is a position in the Public Service Commission, and there's no point of capping it. It's just like having assistant county commissioners, DCCs, whom you don't cap. Because from time to time, needs arise, and you have to fill those positions. That's number one. Number two, as we speak today, there are certain ministries, there are certain CSs who deserve to have assistance, those chief administrative secretaries. And those are the ones we are focusing on. That's why we are removed the capping on the basis that you will now move in on a need-by-need -need basis. If we need five, start with five. If you need more, justify why you need more all the way up to the number, if it can be justified in terms of the work to be done and in terms of the money we have, we would have no problem with that. But let's agree on one thing. Service delivery is not just at the bottom. It starts from the top, it goes down to the bottom. Once it reaches the bottom, it starts going back to the top so that you are able to realize results. While we are working very hard to ensure that the bottom is well catered for in terms of uh, needs of uh, human resource at Waterview. The same applies also to the top. That, that is why, that is the reason why you see uh, the president as advisors, quite a good number of them. They may not be anchored on any law, but they are necessary because they have to give him the necessary advice. This particular one has existed without a law at one time. And this is why we are saying now we need to have a law so that we do not have challenges, uh, challenges going to court mm. to go and say what you are doing is illegal. When it actually it is not illegal per se, it is the process that is not due. Thank you, Moshimoa.
Jiro as well. Thank you very much. Our time is up. I uh, thank you. Don't the Honourable I get her last Judge word? Morgan. Do you want to have a last yes, word? Yes, of course I want to have. I thought. Really, Will you make it a minute? I'll make it a minute. Okay. Just to say that um, it's interesting. You said it's now bottom, top down, and then bottom up. That's a change from the constitution, uh, from the campaign slogan. Um, <laughs> but uh, you know, if this were a business, the board would never approve the hiring of somebody outside or people outside of the organogram and right now what parliament is doing is enacting legislation without an organogram without showing where the gaps are and without responding to reports that show there are gaps at bottom level service delivery so when you talk about prudence that's extremely imprudent and I would wish that there were a report to support what you were saying to make the justification because we are in a period of fiscal consolidation that is bearing heavily on families. So this move may be justified, but the way it's being done is wrong and it is a burden on the people of Kenya. Question, just before she bends off. <laughs> the problem is the numbers or the office? Because what you have created is the office of the chief administrative secretary. I think what she's asking. Both. So the question is, is what's the justification? Is, is, the, is the justification yes. and what's the opportunity is cost? There, is there any report that shows, that can tell us that cabinet secretaries, as they are, are inefficient, ineffective in delivering their mandate? Is there any report by the Public Service Commission or any other institution? I think the best shows? person to answer that is PSC. And okay. the PSC has approved the position. So in the and absence as, of that is what we're we saying. Leave, in the absence of that, yeah. then you're ignoring the other reports that have shown that at certain other levels of government, there are reports that are showing there are gaps that need to be Are addressed. those the gaps we are addressing? No, they by, aren't capi by, they are by, not by, capitalized. By, let's go we, to the we TSC. Have examples. We've, got to, we've got to conclude. When we go to the TSC, <laughs> we have to, to recruit more teachers, we have to recruit more policemen, we have to ensure all these, uh, they're filled up. We have to send that, capitation that, to schools. That, that, capitation to, to make schools. Sure and uh, believe you me, all this is from trained taxes. And they're fully trained. And, and is, training includes posting them on internship. I agree. And having money for it. Thank I you agree. Very much, much more. Thank you very much. We conclude there. The Honorable George Murugara is the member of parliament for Tharaka. He's also the chair of the <laughs> Justice and Legal Affairs Committee of the National Assembly. Wajiro Ikonyo is a an advocate for good governance and accountability. My name is Eric Latif. Thank you very much for tuning in to KTN Newsline. Do have a lovely evening. Thank you. Thank you. you